Oh, good morning. Hey, if you don't know DC SoundDop yet, you really should. I recommend that you head over to his YouTube channel right now and hit subscribe. Um, he's doing some of the best hardware and software reviews for us who are working in pro audio of anyone out there. It's, it's some of the best stuff. Um, so I'm going to share one of his videos with you today. It's not exactly hardware and software review, but it's super fun. Another thing that I love on the DC Sound Up YouTube channel is a series he has called What's in Your Kit. And so I want to share one of those videos with you today. This one is from Ryan Cooper, and it has a lot of really interesting pieces, especially for theatrical sound designers, but really just for everyone. So there's a couple things I want to draw your attention to. Um, number one, he's got a really cool little um, Cat5, Cat6 cable tester that I hadn't seen before. Um, he has a tape measure that is in decimal feet instead of inches, which is really nice. The last little detail that I love in this video is that Ryan carries a pre-labeled uh, P-Touch label with his name on it in case he never needs to leave any gear anywhere that's not already labeled. You can just pull that off, snip off his name, and, and attach it. So I hope you enjoy this video and uh, check out the rest of the videos on the DC Sound Up YouTube page. So first up here is my Blue Pelican. This contains sort of general audio tools. So first thing I got here is a multimeter, then a just general tape measure. Uh, he, these are some uh, just some some various microphone or transmitter belt clips. Um, I have one for for a 5012 because I own a couple of 5012s and. Um, uh, sure, ULX, ULXT, QLXT, uh, an iFixit ProTech Toolkit. Um, this has just got some some pry tools, some tweezers, um, some some small screwdrivers uh, for fixing small electronics and that sort of stuff. This is a um, a thing called a Pocky Ethernet, which is uh, an Ethernet checker verifier. It does um, wire map, uh, cable verification. Uh, cable length checking, all that sort of stuff. Um, it does some functions built in, and then it also does a lot more functions when you connect it to the uh, the phone app that it mates with. All right next, I have a, a trim tape, just a fiberglass fiberglass tape measure. Um, this one is in uh, decimal feet as opposed to inches, which is uh, really useful for working with uh, measurements out of a lot of the popular uh, array calculation software. So I, I work with primarily DMB and um, this is really useful for, for trimming arrays uh, with what that software puts out. Next, just a roll of one inch mic tape, uh, just in case. All right, this is uh, just a couple of cables here. Uh, this is uh, an eighth inch to RCA cable, which I use this either on its own or with some adapters from here to go to quarter inch. And then it has just a, a lightning to um, lightning to eighth inch on it for coming out of, of new iPhones and iPads and stuff. Here is just a little eighth inch headphone extension with a little clip. They use it a lot uh, in pits for musicians. Uh, here is, is the lock um, for this Pelican, and I don't use it as much as I probably should. Some shows warrant uh, using it, so it just depends. All right, next here is just a headlamp. This one's uh, very bright. It does white, a uh, little wider, narrower white, and then it also has a red, I believe, yeah. Next under that is this case uh, with various sort of microphone element accessories for when I don't have the other case uh, with me. There's some windscreens, bobby pins, toupee clips, uh, a couple of little lavalier clips. And I have this little wireless access point um, from GLNet uh, that I found to be to be really nice. It's a short little thing, got these cute little antennas, and it's got three ports on the back, so it functions as a little switch, and then just the, the micro USB power cable and power brick. All right, then I have uh, a Leica D5 Disto. Uh, this one's really nice because it goes up to 650 feet, which is um, really useful for some larger convention center um, and some of the larger theater work. All right, this is a little uh, Behringer cable tester. I recently found out the one that this is knocked off of, so I feel bad for owning this one. I do plan to buy a more name brand uh, one. The one I'm really looking at is the Whirlwind because it does uh, EtherCon pin checking. This is uh, just a Whirlwind Q-Box. Um, I think most of us knows, know what this does, but uh, Lifesaver, couldn't go without it. The next, I have a bunch of mic bags here. Uh, the first one uh, just contains a uh, switched 835, which is really useful for talkback mics, for God mics. 
At the next, these contain various tools and stuff. The first one is a soldering kit. Uh, so it's got a soldering iron, a box cutter, some 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 picks for picking out uh, like like the wire um, shielding, a uh, sucker, a pair of, of small uh, wire strippers, and um, some solder. Uh, the next is just a few uh, screwdrivers, a, uh, a fixed number two screwdriver, and uh, one of the, the Klein um, just, just multi-bit screwdrivers. Next is uh, just a set of speed outs uh, for any screw heads that are stripped out. I have only ever used this once, but I keep it in here just in case. A couple little Sure tweakers. This is a Sennheiser uh, Evo service tool is what they call it. It's for tightening the little uh, locking uh, nut around uh, the, the eighth inch connectors on Sennheiser Evolution packs. This is a little glow screwdriver that um, if it has voltage on it, it'll, it'll glow uh, in this little light here. Um, I don't use it a ton now that I have uh, these checkers, which we'll see in a second, but uh, I still keep it in there. In this one is just some some assorted uh, pliers, nippers, um, some long needle nose pliers, all that good stuff. In this one, I have a bunch of different uh, USB stuff. So uh, lightning to USB, lightning to USB-C, a uh, USB card reader, a USB-A or lightning to USB-A adapter, a couple power bricks, um, some micro USB and USB-B cables. And then there's a little, uh, little USB lamp that can plug into the power bricks and just be used as a light. Below those, I keep just a few cables. So an ethernet cable, little slim HDMI cable, and a Thunderbolt cable. This is just a pair of uh, front of house headphones, uh, Sennheiser HD280s, which are great, very isolated front of house headphones. And these are, are really cool. These are um, three boxes from a guy named Scott Helmke. Um, they're called Lav Amps. So they just have the uh, lav mic input connectors on the side. So I have one for sure uh, TA4, one for sure in Sennheiser uh, three pin Limo, and then one for uh, Sennheiser Evo eighth inch. And then they just have a little volume knob and a headphone connector. So these are really useful for listening um, and checking that elements are good without having to have a, a spare uh, wireless system powered on and making RF. Next up, uh, some tools up here. Just a set of metric and standard Allen keys useful. These have uh, these little tether things, which are nice if you're ever working at, at height and need to tether them. Then I have two actually just voltage checkers for checking if there's voltage on a line or on or in an outlet. Then here is just a, a plug checker um, for checking that outlets are good and have ground and all that, all that good stuff. The next is uh, two little pairs of cutters. So um, this is just a little pair of hack with flush cuts, which are really useful for cutting zip ties. And then here is a pair of Fiskars um, little nippers. So they're, uh, they're really good for, for cutting Hellerman sleeves, which I'll show you guys in a second. Next up here, to start, I have um, some Y cables, uh, both from female to double male and male to double female, mostly used for, for comm splitting. I don't find myself using it for anything else too, too often, um, but I have pairs of them just in case. This is just a, a mini jack to, uh, to actual our mail, mail cable for house music or any stuff like that. Here's a, a pair of uh, XLR ground lift adapters. I don't use them a ton, so I don't really, really do a whole ton in a lot of situations, um, and I sort of frown upon them. Um, I'm looking to get uh, something like a Sescom IL-19 or one of the the whirlwind or radial isolators, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. These are two, what's called a tone plug and a noise plug. So they, um, you plug them into an XLR that's getting phantom power and they'll make a uh, tone. This one does it at various uh, frequencies and patterns um, and then, or uh, pink noise. Uh, so really useful. Next in here, I just have a few, few little knickknacks. So these are some little caps for protecting the ends of a uh, wireless microphone. Uh, capsules. A few batteries. My supply is going a little low. Uh, just a carabiner, just in case if I ever need it to come handy. Uh, just some twist ties, which are really useful for dealing with mic elements and that sort of stuff. Uh, just a bottle of ibuprofen, uh, just in case you get a headache or anything. This um, goes with the multimeter and it's just a little checker that you plug in if you ever need to check uh, a resistor or anything like that. Um, this will tell you the value of it. I just have a couple little key rings. Uh, just have and some um, some 5 8 thread to 3 8 thread adapters for mic stands. And here, uh, this is just various adapters. So to start, I have 
Um, some ether con couplers. Uh, I can never have enough of these. They just seem to, to get used all the time. This is just an ethernet coupler. I have a few of these in shielded and non-shielded. And um, then after that, I just have a lot of various adapters, RCA to quarter inch. This is actually a USB-C to USB-A adapter. And then pairs of XLR female to female, male to male, quarter inch to XLR male, little BNC to to RCA for for video monitors, which we use a lot for um, for uh, closed circuit video monitoring uh, for musical theater. Just BNC T, a BNC Terminator. Um, there's BNC couplers. There's mini jack to, to quarter inch, all that good stuff. And then uh, lastly in here, just a few Sharpies um, and a pair of scissors. All right, next we're off to the, uh, to the Black Pelican. All right, so next up is my Black Pelican here. This has uh, all supplies related to and uh, for theatrical mic rigging. This is a lot emptier than the other one, um, but it's all, all still good, very useful stuff. I feel like I should mention in both of these, I have the, the, the Trek Pack, uh, sort of adjustable system um, from Pelican. And I, I really like it and I rearranged it more times than I can count. Um, so it was definitely, definitely worth the money, although it was very expensive. I also have the, um, the lid organizers for both of them. Uh, if, you, if you're curious about how any of this stuff um, is used, I just did a, a, a webinar with Kevin McCoy, um, who's head of sound for Hamilton, San Francisco, about all sorts of theatrical migrating techniques. So you can find that on my website, which is just coopersounddesign.com. And I'll, I'm sure that we can link that in the description on my YouTube channel, which is just marked under Cooper Sound Design. You can watch that webinar if you're curious about how any of this works. All right, so to start uh, down here, I have a bunch of different sort of DPA cases filled uh, with different things. So these are uh, makeup protector covers for, um, for DPA 4060s, uh, Mickey 2s and Mickey 1s. These are just uh, a couple of assorted clips and windscreens that didn't fit in these boxes, which I'll show you in a second, um, for Countryman B6s. And then these are the same thing, but for B3s. And then in this, I just have, um, I sort of just ended up in here, even though they're not really for uh, for actor mic rigging, but these are just some, um, some violin mounts for DPA 4060s, and they also work for a lot of different elements. Um, and then in here, I have... Um, there's also another bag of these. These are little hair clips, which are really useful for, for cable managing um, wireless microphone cables, especially uh, when, you, when you have all the transmitters out on a table. These can be really useful to keep those, uh, those element cables nice and orderly. So next up here, this is sort of the, the tape uh, category. I also have a box of uh, skin prep for preparing, um, uh, for wiping sweat off skin and that sort of stuff. Um, and then I'm going to have a box of the Remove, which is a uh, adhesive remove for skin in here soon. Then here I have um, just various rolls of tape. Usually I'm a little better stocked with some, uh, some new tape in here as well, uh, but I've been running low lately and I hadn't had a chance to, to refill. Here's just a, a few more of those uh, little hair clips for organization. And here is a, a full-size tape dispenser, uh, which is used uh, for putting tape over, we use uh, electrical tape and then we put an Avery label on top for uh, to put the actor name and character name and then this piece of clear tape over all that to make it uh, a little bit water resistant and uh, more durable. So that is what, what this tape dispenser is for. It also comes in handy for putting tape on uh, Aviom channel and P16 channel labels as well as um, M7 channel labels if I ever have an M7 for a show. Uh, and here we do, uh, there's just some extra, we use shoe bags with, um, and they have Velcro on each of the spots in the shoe bag. So we put a label over here uh, with the person's name and the character name and the transmitter number. And those stick on. So these are just some extra of the little stick on things just in case I need an extra one. Here, uh, there's a few different types of, uh, of elastic, uh, just black. Uh, this one's a little thinner than this one and brown. Um, which are useful for making toupee clips um, and making what are called halos to hold microphones on people's hair. More about that in that uh, webinar on my YouTube channel if you're interested. Uh, this is a cartridge of tape for that, that tape dispenser. Um, here is moleskin, which is uh, useful for wrapping around elements to prevent sweat from getting into them. can also be useful for film for uh, reducing uh, noise on a microphone, uh, like movement noise from clothing. An empty bag. These are just some some two pay clips that are waiting to be made. I'll show you the finished ones in a second. Uh -huh. 
think that that is about it for in here. And then there's this, uh, this is a belt clip actually from, from an OtterBox, um, from an OtterBox case uh, that I keep in here because for one of the regional companies that I do shows for a couple times a year, um, one of the ASMs named Rapunzel uses this as the strap for her, for her free speak belt pack and really likes it. So I keep it in here for her. Uh, this is a Hellerman sleeve tool, which is used to stretch uh, Hellerman sleeves, which I'll show you in a second, to, uh, to make those microphone rigs. Okay, then here are some organizers that I have that hold um, hold some small parts uh, that are useful for microphones. Um, the first of which being um, some ear rigs. Uh, I have them all labeled to what goes in which. Um, and this also has some extra things in it, so it holds these ear rigs. Um, I have another box actually here with more of the Telex uh, ear loops to make ear rigs. Just some uh, some lapel mounts for microphones. Um, these are some some cable clips just to, to sort of do a cable strain relief on the back of the neck, uh, windscreens, and then just some various sizes of heat shrink uh, just in case I need them. Then this one is all sorts of um, high boost caps for different uh, makes and models of microphones, flat caps. Um, I also have just a couple of um, makeup protectors thrown in there, and then I have the little guides in here um, pulled off of some, some, uh, some B6 uh, bags to um, to show me the length so that I can sort of measure those up. The next, this uh, this contains all of the Hellerman sleeves, um, so a couple of different sizes as well as the lubricant that's made by Hellerman, even though I don't, I don't use this often. I use uh, soapy water more often, uh, which you can find more on that in, um, in that webinar. Uh, here's just some extra organizers or some extra little slots for these organizers. Yeah. Uh, here is uh, just a few of the toupee clips. I sort of outgrew this, um, but it holds the larger ones that I don't use very often. And I'll show you the smaller ones that I use more often in a second. In the very bottom of here, and I actually have two of them, but one sort of slid under, um, is some, just a, a rat tail comb uh, for helping uh, run microphone wires through people's hair. Then here I have uh, e-tape containers that have all sorts of different types of toupee clips in them for holding microphones in people's hair. Um, so it's just got the five different colors all ready to go. And here I have a couple rolls of, uh, of electrical tape. I usually have every color in here, but I ended up putting them in a work box and I haven't uh, restocked them yet. Here is um, a roll of 3M Tegaderm tape, which is, is useful uh, for people that don't respond so well to the transport that I had earlier. It's a little bit more clear. Uh, so I keep that just in case. In this box, this point source box, I have um, some point source ear rigs. Um, I only have a few of these. I have a lot more of the Telex because they're very expensive, um, but I bought a few and they're a really good option for quickly making an ear rig or sometimes, or a lot of times they're more comfortable. So I have a few of them and I sort of use them sparingly. All right, then up here, I have the same set of um, of nippers and cutters, which are, um, this, these cutters are useful for cutting this floral wire um, and for the Hellerman sleeves, and as are these useful for the Hellerman sleeves. Uh, then in here, I have that floral wire to make microphone ear rigs. Uh, as I said, you can find more about all that um, on the YouTube channel. And then some, just some more colors of floral wire and some key rings, uh, just because I, I tend to keep those around. And then in here, I have just a bag of, of alcohol swabs for cleaning uh, tape residue. I try to avoid using these on skin, but um, they're useful for cleaning it off microphone elements, cleaning all sorts of tape off of, off of different stuff. Uh, and this is just a, a bag of smaller bag, which I use for, um, for microphone elements, both for storage sometimes, but often so I can put a bad microphone element um, since they break pretty common in theater or pretty often in theater. Um, so I can put a bad one in here and mark what's wrong with it um, and send it back to the shop or if they're mine back home. Um, and know what the issue was. And then lastly in here, um, some scissors and some, uh, some Sharpies. I made these uh, sleeves out of um, moldable thermoplastic that hold the, I don't know if I could get them out, um, that hold the scissors because uh, the scissors open and close every once in a while and they started putting these, these holes in my uh, Pelican lid organizers. So I made these sleeves for the scissors um, that keep that from happening. All right, well, that's it for this Pelican, and now we'll move on to the backpack. All right, so next up is my backpack. This is a, an e-bags professional flight. I used to used to have a professional slim, um, but I wanted some more space uh, for some overnight clothes um, and uh, just, just more stuff in general, so I went for the flight. These these bags are pretty affordable from e-bags, and they're 
They're really good quality. Uh, they almost always have coupons on them. Uh, this is the, the f completely full everything that I would ever possibly carry in it. A lot of times I try and minimize depending on where I'm going and what I know I'll need because it can get, it can get pretty heavy uh, with all the stuff in it. All right, so to start, in the back pocket here, I carry um, a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Um, this comes with me almost everywhere. It's for personal work as well as uh, QLab for shows, some video playback for shows, all that fun stuff is done on here. Next, I carry a Windows laptop as well. This is a Lenovo X1 um, Yoga. Uh, I really like it because it does the flip all the way around. Um, so I use this for, in, in live shows, for, for system processing software, for networking softwares. Uh, and then in offline things uh, like IIS, um, things that are, are other things that are PC only, like some of the console editors, Sometimes it's just really nice to have a dedicated uh, PC for. Uh, Ease is another thing uh, that it's really great to have this for. Um, so I really like having the dedicated PC. And then I also have Boot Camp on my Mac, uh, just in case I, I don't have this with me. In the next pocket here, it starts out with uh, a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I use this primarily for scripts, um, for musicals. And then I have a, a page flip pedal app that goes with it that uh, it makes this a really nice tool to have. And next I have a regular iPad Air. Uh, I use this one a lot more for, for console apps um, and having the two is really important because sometimes I'll have uh, someone will be mixing off of my script and I'll still want to, to do remote console editing. So, um, so having this iPad as well is, is really important for that workflow. Here is just a, a notebook. It's from my school, which is uh, UNC School of the Arts. And next down here, I have two chargers. Um, one of the Apple 98 watt USB-C chargers for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And then this is a, um, a 60 watt USB-C charger, which I bought as a second for my old 13 inch MacBook Pro. And then I kept uh, to go with the, the X1 Yoga. This is, a, is an MX Master uh, wireless mouse uh, in a case, which I really like for, for mobile uh, productivity. All right, then sort of up here in these slots, uh, in, the, in the top, I carry a lot of various uh, USB cables and adapters. Um, so this is actually a, a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. Then this is a, a multi-port USB-C dock. So it's got HDMI, VGA, gigabit ethernet, some card readers, and some USB full-size ports as well as a, as a power pass-through. Two actually um, USB-C to USB-A adapters, which are useful for shows, for thumb drives, for, for devices, all that fun stuff. Uh, this is just a, a USB-C to USB-A cable. Two of them actually to go with hard drives and stuff, and then a USB-C, USB-C cable to also go with with hard drives, which you'll see in a second. Uh, this is just a, a shielded Ethernet coupler, um, which is sort of like a last ditch effort to have in here, just in case I need another one. I find going from like a front of house bundle to uh, a pit bundle uh, sometimes I'm a little short in some of the smaller productions I do, so having this is definitely really useful. All right, so in the, uh, starting in the bottom here, I have a four terabyte, just spinning hard disk drive uh, for any large files. I keep a pretty comprehensive sound effects library on here, so I, I have that accessible to me wherever I am. In here, I have two different um, portable SSDs. Uh, these are just, they're actually both 512 or 500 gigabyte uh, SSDs, and then there's there's one more USB-C to USB-C cable in the pouch to go with these. So then next in this top front compartment here, I carry a pair of Bose uh, QC35s. And then in the front here, I really love um, the organization space that this gives me. To start in the top corner here, I just carry um, some business cards. And then here, there's just a, a cleaning cloth to clean off uh, computer screens, console screens, all that good stuff. I have some some assorted flash drives up here, just some some sort of junky ones that um, are just sort of nice and old to to use with uh, consoles. This is one that I got at Infocom from Countryman. So just some older ones that for for some picky pickier consoles are nice to have. This one actually keeps a macOS Mojave uh, bootable installer on it, just in case I ever need to reflash a computer, which is something that happens more than I'd like like to uh, admit. And here I have a double-ended USB flash drive with USB-A and USB-C on it. I have a little bit more rugged one of these that I keep on my keys as well. And then some just some 32 gig uh, utility sort of USB-A um, 3.0 flash drives. 
Next up in here, um, I keep an eye lock. Um, this just has, has pro tools on it, a couple of, of plugins on it, a backup backup pair of, of headphones, uh, just in case I would hate to be traveling and have forgotten or my headphones to be dead. So these are just some hardwired headphones. Uh, there's an inhaler. I've actually never used this particular one, but I have it just in case uh, because I have had a history of asthma. A couple little things that have sort of snuck their way into here. Um, I only ever really intended for maybe one of these adapters to end up in here, but four made their way. And then I also have just a little uh, five eighths to three eighths so an adapter that snuck in here. These are two little pieces of P-Touch tape that just have my logo on them. So if I'm ever leaving something of mine on a job site and I have not already marked it, I'm sure that you could see that I've been pretty thorough about marking all my stuff, but sometimes I discover something that I haven't marked. I keep these just in case so that I can can always uh, mark something as mine. And so back here, there's a couple of, couple of different things. Um, so to start off, this is a, a power bank. Uh, then I have a couple of just power bricks here. One of the new 18 watt USB-C ones from Apple and then one of the older five watt ones. It's actually a knockoff one. And then uh, a lightning to USB-C and lightning to USB-A to go with those. A uh, USB-A to a micro USB for, for charging the battery pack and any other things. And then uh, this is a pair of AirPods Pros. I've been sort of on the fence because I got these after I got the QC35s and the uh, the backpack, but these are just, they're super convenient. Um, and I really like them primarily for the convenience factor, but they don't sound as good as the QC 35s, but I'm finding that I prefer these AirPods Pros. There's just an ID badge, um, from the places I work and just a, a sticker that got sort of shoved in there and, uh, just some, some assorted, a pen and some pencils and a Sharpie. And then this is the Apple pencil that goes with my iPad pro for, for taking notes, for writing on scripts for that. It's, uh, it's priceless. So that is all. All right, thank you guys uh, for joining. I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed seeing what, what I uh, carry around with me. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments and I'll try to look at that. Or you can email me at soundcooper at gmail.com. Uh, if you're at all interested in seeing my work, you can find that at coopersounddesign.com. Now that's an incredible amount of gear that Ryan is able to get into those cases and another really well organized setup there using those uh, Trek pack uh, divider systems really really nice and everybody that has them seems to say they are well worth the money. The theatrical mic rigging kit was really interesting I thought to see up close. I think it's fascinating personally the amount of work that goes into making those special rigs up not only so that they're comfortable for the talent but that they're reliable and repeatable for for dozens of shows over and over again with a ton of cast members these days needing mics for every show. I think it's a really unique art that allows whoever is mixing the show the consistency they need each performance. And I appreciate Ryan showing us a little bit of what goes into that here. Check out what Ryan's doing next at coopersounddesign.com and Cooper Sound Design on YouTube. Again, link down in the description. I hope you all keep sending in these great videos for this series. It's a lot of fun. Visit dcsoundup.com forward slash slash submit your kit to find out the details. Huge thank you to those of you who support this channel through Patreon. I really do appreciate it. And I'll be back really soon with more videos.